where are we going? We just departed down, well actually we're still in Dallas, Texas. We're heading towards I-35 and then we'll be on our way to the hill country, Greater Austin. We'll have to see where our first stop will be. We haven't quite gotten that part yet, but that's theory where we should stop. Can we go find some rocks near Austin, Texas? Oh. I found a number of restaurants that deliver in Austin. Oh, they deliver restaurants that deliver rocks, apparently. You, you're not that smart, Siri. Seriously, I don't, I don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> through Temple, Texas, which is south of Waco, Texas, about an hour north of Austin. And about this point, we, we've been driving for about an hour across fairly flat topography, the rolling hills of the Cretaceous. And what do we see as we come past mile marker 299 here at Temple as a ridge in the foreground, and that is the Balcones Fault Escarpment. That is the eastern edge of the hill country. So we're getting at least within sight of the geologic change from north central Texas into the central Texas highlands. First effects of hill country and the auto uplift to the east, the depression created during the formation of the Gulf of Mexico during uh, the tertiary period. caverns all over Central Texas, and interspace caverns is when it's extremely convenient. Right here off I-35. Let's go take a look. This is, I think is a little bit more interesting, at least I do anyway. This is fossilized coral reef. This lets us know that this part of Texas was underwater 120 million years ago. Here we can actually see the Balcones fault system from the inside out. On that side of the fault is the Gulf Coastal Plain. On this side is the Edwards Plateau and the Hill Country. A rock dispenser. Let's see what we get. Insert quarters and turn for grading. Come out here and we'll see what we got. Well, let's see what I got out of the rock dispenser machine. Open this puppy up. They really protect the rocks. Uh, let's see, this looks like, see a thin curved rock like that? I'm gonna guess that that is an eggshell. Probably from some, it is a oviraptor dinosaur eggshell from China, from 70 million years ago, so towards the end of the late Cretaceous. Very cool. Kind of a rock dispenser. That's worth 50 cents, I think. We are driving down downtown Austin, Texas. It's the Texas capital. It's the Texas capital. It's on the edge of the hill country. One of the scenic things to see and do here in the Austin area. We're going to see and do a number of them before we leave. When you're down in Austin, there's always a party on 6th Street. When you get tired of looking at the rocks, come down and listen to it. Let's go check out the Museum of the Weird. <laughs> Take your time. What do you say? Tell me what you say. What a creepy thing, this is weird. This is definitely a museum of the weird. Good marmot. Plastic guy. There's a mermaid on this one.
do for you today though is I'm going to do two variations of the pain proof man. I'm going to do the human blockhead. Uh. All the way back like that. Let me shout out, grab me in the nail, don't move, let me do all the work, and in three, two, one. Uh. All right, cool. Thank you, Devin. the corner of 11th and Congress in Austin, you'll find the great Texas State Capitol building. It's built here in 1885 on about 51 and a half acres of prime Austin front, and it's lined in a beautiful Texas pink granite, which is quarried up at Granite Mountain near Marble Falls. It really looks pretty good in bronze. About the car park dinosaur? Uh, I think that's probably Cretaceous. Maybe Jurassic. Here at Inks Lake State Park, what we see at the surface are metamorphic rocks that are over a billion years old. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have been changed from pre existing rocks by intense heat and pressure during burial. These are called gneisses. They're coarse grained metamorphic rocks and they were formed from pre existing volcanic rocks like rhyolites and tufts that existed in the pre Cambrian. Before this whole area was uplifted, these rocks were buried deep, mashed together during the continent collisions that occurred later. And what we see at the surface are these very mangled, uh, changed rocks. And they're everywhere out here. Sometimes, when you have a really old rock like this Precambrian gneiss, sometimes new magmas come up and reincorporate the old pieces of rock into the new rock. Scientists call these big pieces of rock xenoliths. And in this case, the existing rock was this schist, or metamorphic rock, and this granite intruded into that rock, picking up pieces of it, breaking it off, and reincorporating it into the new rock, which is granite plus this big boulder of schist. Sometimes when you're looking at these granites, you see veins of white minerals like this. This is quartz. And these veins of quartz have a lot of different minerals associated with them. They come in from, from fluids that are moving through this system that are charged with minerals. So you get things in there like pyrites and chalcopyrites, sulfides. What's interesting is what you really look for in things like this in other places is gold. These are often ore bearing deposits. Mm -hmm. We're on our way to Enchanted Rock State Park to see one of the largest batholiths or exposed igneous mantle complexes in the entire United States area. I'm excited about it actually. the beginning of the trail to the summit shows Enchanted Rock and its sister mounds all uplifted in their faults that run this way that have brought this rock up but actually this rock is under our feet for a hundred square miles throughout this whole area. But right here it's been uplifted a bit and we can see it at the surface but it only accounts for a few percent of the total volume of rock that's actually out here. About 1.2 billion years ago, this entire area was made up of rocks that had been cooled and then reformed into metamorphic rocks. And then a big bubble of light granite magma floated up to the top and intruded its way into this pack saddle schist. That was called the Town Mountain Granite. It made up a giant wedge of igneous rock that scientists call a batholith. In certain places along the hill country front, you can find little bits and pieces of this batholith poking up out of the ground. One of those is here at Enchanted Rock. Enchanted Rock looks kind of like an onion because it has these layers that look like they could be peeled off. 
And that's because as this granite rose to the surface, the stress within the rock is released, causing these outer layers to exfoliate. That's what geologists call this an exfoliation dome. constantly working on this rock to erode it back down into sediment. What you'll see is that some of the minerals in the rock are more unstable with surface conditions than others. For example, quartz is extremely resilient and at the end of the day most of this rock will be weathered away but quartz will last and eventually end up down in the ocean. That's one reason why you have quartz silica beaches around most parts of the world. One of the things I love about geology and love about driving through the country is to see how the landscapes change as you drive from one different uh, area that has a different geologic history to another. For example, we were in the Chanted Rock looking at big granite craggy uh, rocks in a very rough country and now we've driven up over onto the Cretaceous rocks and now it's all smooth limestone, very soft topography. Lots of trees, lots of grass, very, very nice. See how you know everything around us, our whole landscapes, the world that we know is in many ways defined by the rocks beneath our feet. It just fascinates me. That's part of what I like about it. Yeah.